All right, guys, so siege battles in Total War games are a really interesting topic. We've seen them go up and down throughout the series. Some games did them really well, some games didn't, and some games were quite in between, right? But siege battles in Total War games were some of my most memorable battles of my childhood experiences. Playing them for the first time in the original medieval Total War completely altered my perspective of how fun Total War could be. Watching my army surround a mighty castle, breaking down multi-layered walls with trebuchets, charging in masses of infantry. It was just incredible. Over the years, siege battles have developed in some ways with more complexity, larger cities with multiple layers of streets and choke points, with new mechanics like victory points. It's become one of the focal points of battle gameplay. But looking back at all these games and the progression in the series, I can't help but notice that siege battles got worse. With Roman Medieval 2, though, having really nice features like city viewing with citizens running around and of course introducing proper 3D siege battles, they suffered terribly from a non-responsive AI and unit pathfinding issues that have largely persisted throughout the rest of the series as well. These games especially, Roman Medieval 2, did not age well at all in siege battles. And though the battle health system meant things were at least more realistic, weighty, and tactical from a gameplay perspective, the siege battles in these games were largely bogged down by frequent bugs and engine issues. Empire and Napoleon were equally horrible to play in siege battles, and that was mostly down to battle AI that insisted on having long line battles no matter the battle map. So you'd often see the AI army sally out of wherever it was to meet you on open ground. Plus, this lazily implemented battle map design. Besieging a city like London or Paris, you'd expect a major metropolis, but instead we got these tiny looking towns that resembled villages, if anything. Siege battles in these games were so poor in quality that they were almost always avoided, and these games have a reputation for having the worst siege battles in the series. With Shogun 2 Total War, things got a lot better. We had decent siege battles with multi-layered castles. We had an AI that did a decent job of trying to defend its walls and defend it right to the last man. We had generally a pretty tough time to win siege battles, especially without actual siege equipment. Shogun 2 siege battles kicked my butt and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed going through technology again to get better units, get better skills for my generals to have a a better chance of winning them. I enjoyed defending a multi-layered keep again, ordering my units to retreat up to a higher level with my archers using covering fire on the walls. It always got my heart pumping, and I gave every single siege battle my blood, sweat, and tears to win. And man, did I give it my tears when I lost, which was more often than I'd care to admit. But then we got Rome 2 and Attila, and for the first time, we had campaign mechanics change the way siege battles played and felt in such a drastic way. The map region system switched to provinces, where you have to have every region in a province to maximize the benefits of owning them, which was a way of narrowing the scope of how the player expanded. You ideally want to have three to four full provinces quickly, rather than have a dozen cities all in different provinces provinces just to maximize public order, income, etc. But the bigger change here was locking armies to character generals. The days of captains leading a few units around the map were gone, and instead we had an army limit system locked to characters where, let's face it, you were facing an AI usually just busy idling and recruiting in a city you had to besiege. Suddenly we were besieging cities left, right, and center. Now the siege battles in Rome 2 and Attila themselves looked pretty damn good. From an immersion and visual perspective, they were some of the best the series had ever seen. You had a really diverse set of city battle maps that I really enjoyed looking at in both games. Light and bright in Rome 2 and dark and moody with an escalation system in Attila, of course, let's not forget. And the design and layout of the cities were nicely done as well, with room for choke points, funneling enemy troops this way and that 
that, etc. But on the other hand, CA opted to completely remove multi-layered castle battles in these games, which was a damn shame, them being the favorite styles of battles for many players in the series thus far. Even so, the battles were nice to look at, the weather systems were fun, the siege equipment with sapping, upgradable siege towers, ladders were nice, and with naval combined siege battles as well, at first glance it all seemed really, really cool. Then you actually started playing them, and most of the time, tactics unfortunately went out the window. The AI is weakest in these games in the series, as it has absolutely no idea what to do with cavalry, often throwing them away to defensive towers. The AI doesn't effectively use siege equipment, most of the time attacking one wall while the other one was already broken down, or just going for a gate, throwing fire at it until it breaks down, which I just never understood why that was an option in these games to to begin with, and generally defending city walls are an incredibly tedious affair. You almost always are better off fighting on the ground where you can choke the enemy in. They were going to go on the walls anyway, of course, so you could have archers on the ground just firing from below. Naval ships unloading troops onto beaches could get bugged. We had the gate bug, of course, that we still have today. We still had pathfinding and clipping issues. It was just a really messy affair. That isn't to say that none of the battles were fun though, you did have some fun battles at times, especially with the Western Roman Empire defending against hordes of Huns and Attila, army after army attacking your city until they've wiped you out and they burn it all down, playing as Carthage and Hannibal at the gates and fighting your way across the Alps against countless Roman armies and finally getting to lay siege to the gates of Rome was an awesome time, and between catapults, ballistas, trebuchets and more, the siege units in these games were so much fun, but with AI issues, with a change in the unit HP system leading to not very impactful or weighty fighting, I often found myself getting bored or simply getting annoyed more often than not. As nice as battle map design was in these games, and as visually appealing as these cities are, I avoided them as much as I possibly could. Now, while Attila improved on Rome 2, everyone agrees, Thrones of Britannia improved on it with most players regarding the game as having the best siege battles the series has ever seen. Multi-layered and visually stunning British villages and cities that were amazing to attack as the Vikings pillaging across the islands, or to defend as Britannic kingdoms manning these brilliant walls against masses of powerful Viking raiders. For the first time in a while, units felt like they they had genuine weight and charge impact. Cavalry felt more balanced than ever. Battle maps had some really unique design with town entrances that were choke points, naval and land combined battles that were super fun, elevation that mattered, and especially after the optimization issues of Attila, having smooth, beautiful battles in thrones was just a godsend. But since Thrones, siege battles with every new game were either much the same or far worse. Three Kingdoms is nothing extraordinary, mostly a return to Rome 2 or Attila, with visually immersive and well-designed maps, but all the while lacking fun siege equipment and suffering from pathfinding issues. Troy, on the other hand, was an extremely baffling game with siege battles, because small town battles were essentially land battles with extra steps, and city battles were absolutely massive unnecessarily massive, and you didn't have siege towers until you unlocked them in the tech tree, which was just ludicrous game design. Defensive towers melted your troops, of course, before you made it to the walls, ass ladders, it just felt like the Warhammer battle gameplay reskinned to fit this setting, blobby and uninspired. The AI again was decent enough, but overall this Warhammer style gameplay meant that units felt massless, visuals looked soulless, and things were just not very very fun. And then we have the Warhammer games, and I've played them quite a bit, and siege battles are absolutely the worst. Almost every battle is a siege battle, which diminishes their importance. Walls are basically there cosmetically, as so many units can easily break them down, and to be fair, you don't even need to break them down, as units can jump up and climb them with ass ladders. And the design and layout of the cities mean that you can only attack from one side, completely removing tactical depth altogether. A AI might be okay and pathfinding might be a bit better, but these siege battles have no strategy or depth whatsoever. Units feel squishy and weightless, no impact, no regard for casualties, it's a complete blobfest. 
With Total War Pharaoh, it was a mixed bag, but the good news was that CA Sophia took a massive step back into the past and tried to at least emulate Rome 2 or a bit of Thrones, which compared to Warhammer definitely had much better siege battles. Minor settlement battles are reminiscent of Thrones here with nicely laid out map design with things like weather conditions, different types of terrain actually making a difference, and visually, major siege battles are basically like Rome 2 or Attila, huge, sprawling cities that honestly are far bigger than you know what to do with. The problems with Pharaoh, though, again, are pathfinding, AI behavior, and battle frequency. It seems, however, Creative Assembly improves in one area with siege battles, they screw up in other areas because AI sallying out, not being responsive to being under attack, reinforcements arriving outside a city to get slaughtered, it's all just getting incredibly old. And that's why Pharaoh saw such a major backlash. It was a return to historical style battles, yay, but without solving the issues that bogged them down in the first place. Siege battles in Total War games simply need to be better. Players are tired of how bad a state these are in. We've had ups and downs, some games did some things right, others got it all wrong, but no game so far has got it perfect yet. I would personally say original Medieval, Shogun 2, and Thrones are the best we've had in the series, and those games are decades old now, so CA really needs to step up their focus on fixing siege battles all around, bringing some balanced games gameplay that is fun, challenging, and rewarding. The absolute bare minimum for me is we need siege battle maps with proper walls, siege equipment, victory point locations, choke points, and multiple layers of defensive positions. We need an AI that knows how to use each of these elements to its advantage, yet still leave wiggle room for the player to employ tactical gameplay, usage of different equipment, different styles of units to take advantage, different situational features to overcome challenges, and we need siege battles to be infrequent with post-battle replenishment nerfed. At the end of the day, the player needs to feel like a siege is a last resort, and a loss could determine the outcome of a war. This is what's missing from the series right now. And that's it for today, guys. This has been my case study, essentially, on how siege battles have been implemented from game to game, and how the series as a whole has made some progress here and some major setbacks there. Battles are the primary aspect of Total War that sets these games apart, and I really want to enjoy battles, and yet sieges in particular feel neglected and forgotten about. The next game hopefully does a better job all around, maybe not perfectly, but hopefully at least with a little more effort and innovation, with multi-layered visually stunning cities, bringing back castles and keeps that change visually with each upgrade, fixing AI and pathfinding issues that are so often just cringe to watch, achieve a playable balance between meeting the challenge of an offensive siege and putting up a stalwart defensive siege against insurmountable odds. All of this and more would go a long way to making siege battles in Total War the best that they can be. I really hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. If you did, give it a like and drop any thoughts or questions in the comments section below. I'd love to hear what you think about everything I've discussed here today, what you think about siege battles in Total War. Subscribe for more Total War content, gameplay, and videos just like this, and thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.